Here's one very important tip for group pride and etiquette over breakfast. Don't be the guy that's drying his socks <laughs> on his lap <laughs> while you're trying to eat your toast. Good morning and welcome to a beautifully sunny Sunday morning ride in Essex. We're out again this morning training for London to Paris and I'm going to stop saying that in every video because essentially the next 16 weeks are all going to be training for London to Paris. But of the 11 of us doing London to Paris, there's seven of us out today doing a group ride and so I thought today would be a good day to talk about the etiquette of group riding. Let's do it. So the first tip is no half wheeling and this one is all about keeping yourself and your fellow riders safe. So half wheeling happens when you are drafting the rider in front of you and drafting is when you're sat right up behind the rider in front so they catch all the wind and you get some clean air to ride through and it saves you a lot of energy because you don't have to pedal as hard as they are. So yeah when you're drafting and you just push on a bit too far and your front wheel overlaps their back wheel. Now don't get me wrong there are going to be times where this happens but as soon as you notice it, you do want to drop back and give yourself a little bit of room behind the rider in front because by half wheeling, you're not giving the rider in front any room to move if they suddenly come across an obstruction and need to swerve out across the road. If that were to happen, they're going to hit your front wheel and potentially you're both going to end up coming off. So for your own safety, no half wheeling. So on the back of learning how to draft properly and not half wheeling is learn how to be drafted. Now this one again is for safety reasons and it's definitely for courtesy. And you might wonder, well if someone's riding behind me, then what do I need to worry about? Well, if you find that you've got someone drafting you and you get to a hill and you need to suddenly get out of the saddle, you might not realize it, but as you stand up, you can find that you suddenly lose speed, makes you lose momentum, and momentarily your bike slips backwards. Now, if someone is right up behind you drafting, there's every chance they could go into the back of you. So just a little sign you can do is a quick flick of both elbows to let the person behind know that you're about to stand up. Doing so, they can see that, drop back a little bit, and hopefully there should be no worry of them landing on your back wheel. And while we're talking about arm movements, that leads us nicely on to taking a fair pull at the front. So if you find yourself riding in a pace line or a chain gang, as they're also known, which is where you have a group of riders all lined up behind each other with the person at the front, as I mentioned earlier, taking the wind for the rest of the group. What will happen is that after a short while, the rider at the front will peel off to the side and naturally drift to the back of the group so that the person who was in second place now becomes the leader of the group and they start to take the wind using more energy for a while. By doing that, you can really up the speed of the whole group while saving energy for everybody. However, if you're second in queue, you need to look out for the telltale elbow flick from the person in front. This will tell you that they've had enough at the front, they're burnt out and they need a bit of a rest and it's your time to come through and have a pull. So if you're playing second fiddle in the pace line, make sure to look out for that elbow flick and do your bit Move up to the front when it's your time. Come on, mate, get up, your turn. What am I doing all your work for you? Did you not see the signal? Did you not read the signs? I shouldn't have to talk about it, verbalise it, vocalise it as well. That should be enough. Get up there. Good old Jimmy. Now moving on to even more arm and hand signals. <laughs> Pretty much everyone knows that when turning left or right, you raise your left or right arm out to the side. However, if you're just coming up upon an obstruction in the road, like a parked car or a skip or anything in the road that's getting in your way, and you just need to let other people behind you know that they need to move over slightly, then putting your left arm behind your back and pointing out right around the obstruction is the hand signal you want to use. However, if there's another vehicle coming the other way that blocks your way around the obstruction and the whole group needs to stop, then placing an arm behind you, palm backwards, will let the riders behind you know that the whole group needs to come to a stop. If, however, you're riding in a larger group with many more people much further behind you, then raising a hand in the air does just as good a job.
Oh dear. Uh, we've actually lost the road. Um, I guess just stick between the grass, right? Quite deep. <laughs> <laughs> Cliffy's on a hiker bike session. Right, well this is yeah. going to be the ultimate test of my lake winter boots. Let's see if I end up with wet feet from this. Right, I'm off. <laughs> Oh my god, my feet are freezing. Uh, so, so the short answer is my feet are now soaking wet because it was that deep. Head. Actually went over the tops of the boots. How are you going to get over there? <laughs> that is bloody ridiculous. Don't fall in the ditch. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hang on, hang on, he's going to oh. jump. How are you going to get over? <laughs> that, you're going to slip. <laughs> Ah, oh, like a gazelle, well mate. I thought there was a better idea going through the field. <laughs> so the problem I now have is, because my boots are completely sealed, water has gone up over the top of the ankle, and now the water's not getting out. <laughs> so I am going to be squelching the last three miles to the calf. There's another bit of group ride etiquette. If one idiot goes through a very deep puddle, don't follow him. No. Yes. It's all Jimmy's fault. Yes. <laughs> Although, as Chris has just pointed out, at least the bike's clean now. Right, off long. we go. Not for long. Oh boy, that was deep and very cold. I didn't expect that water to have so much resistance. I had to change down into like first, second gear to push through it. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, as I say, water cascaded over the top of my lovely winter boots. So yes, my feet are now absolutely drenched. Thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> there was no other through. Can't go over it. Can't go under it. Got to go through it. We're going on a bike ride. <laughs> what a beautiful day. <laughs> <sighs> and one major tip for the etiquette of group riding is never forget to have breakfast. Winter boots are good, so long as the water doesn't go over the top of the ankle. Right, breakfast done, back on with the tips. Oh, what's happening here? Yeah, he's come right off, hasn't he? Uh, <laughs> oh, that is resistance training for you. Oh my God, that water is so cold. Well, having bailed my shoes out before at the cafe, they are now completely full of water again. What are we doing? What are we doing, Stewie? It's good because it's like that um, ice bath stuff that helps you stop getting flu, but through the feet. It's good. Good for your immune system, Stuart's suggesting. Yeah. Foliage. <sighs> it's fair to say we've all picked up a little bit of the local countryside having gone through those puddles. And as Jimmy has just pointed out, that was a posh puddle. It had a Porsche in it. <laughs> now there's no easy way of talking about the next one, but it does need talking about because it's uh, doing a snot rocket. It's completely natural that at some point during your ride, your nose will either get bunged up or it will start to run. And when that happens for too long, you're gonna end up struggling to breathe. And at that point, you need to perform a snot rocket. Now, if you don't know what a snot rocket is, it's holding one of your nostrils while blowing violently out of the other one to clear your nasal passage of any phlegm, snot, or any other detritus up there. Now I know it's not pleasant, but it is a necessity. And when you're doing it, you always have to have the courtesy glance over your shoulder to make sure there's no one on your back wheel, because there is nothing more disgusting than being sat behind someone who's about to perform said snot rocket and you get it anywhere on your body or even worse, on your face. So be kind to those riders around you, courtesy glance over the shoulder, make sure you're alone before you do it. The next tip is another safety one, and it's pointing out any hazards on the road ahead. If you're sat anywhere other than at the very front of a group ride, then it's almost impossible to see any part of the road ahead. So if you're up front calling out any potholes or manhole covers that have sunken, it's imperative to let the riders behind you know that there's an obstruction coming. 
Now the final two tips generally come under the same category of calls and they're chiefly there to keep the group safe and make sure that everyone manages to get back home. And the first one is calling out at junctions that you go through. As you go across the junction and get past it yourself, it's courtesy to look either way to see if there's any traffic coming and call clear to the riders behind you. If it is, this is especially the case at blind junctions where you can't necessarily see around the corner before you're out in the middle of the road. Alternatively, if there is traffic coming, then calling it out and letting the rider behind know to help them stop safely before they come into conflict with any other road user. And similar to that, even when you're on a straight road, is calling out any vehicles that you might come into conflict with again. Car! Stop, stop, stop! Because as you can see, there's always cars that will try to push through no matter how small the gap. And as I spoke about in earlier videos, that's exactly why I bought my cyclic cameras. Anyway, let's not bring the tone of the video down too much. Now you can just use a simple call of car, but that can be confusing as to whether there's a car coming up ahead or one coming from behind. So there's variations of it of car up, car down, or in Scotland, I think they use nose and tail to indicate the direction of the vehicle. Seeing as there's so many different varieties of call for that, if you're going out on your first group ride with a new group, then it's always best to ask the group leader what the call is specifically, so you know if you come across that sort of obstruction. I mean, it was a bit wet. It was a bit wet, we just had to it. We'll always remember that corner, <laughs> New Hall Corner. Yeah, we'll always have memories of that corner, lake, flood, puddle, whatever you want to call it. Right, good to see you, old boy. Good riding with you. Lovely, see you next week. Take care, see you later. So, another 35 miles in the book. That was a good ride today, despite the lakes that we had to go through. It was a very enjoyable ride. The sun came out at the end and the temperature went up considerably. Garmin saying it's now 10 degrees. Very nice. And as I mentioned, some very good group riding etiquette, because that's probably one of the larger groups we've been out in for a while. There's normally four or five of us that go out, but yeah, today, seven of us out training for London to Paris because we only have 16 weeks left, as I mentioned earlier. So we need to get those training rides in. But my list of group riding etiquette, that list is by no means exhaustive. So what are your group ride etiquette rules? Leave a comment below and you could just help out a new rider going on their first group ride. But whether you're brand new to cycling or a seasoned pro, I hope you found that informative and interesting. Thank you very much for watching. And as ever, I will see you in the next one. Take care. Don't be the guy that's drying his socks <laughs> on his lap while you're trying to eat your toast. How about don't drive in <laughs> shit weather? <laughs> well, there's that as well.